All right, today in the arcade show, we're going to show you how to switch a potentiometer out on a Sega driving game. So, as you can see, we have this uh, old crazy taxi here, which has uh, been sitting in a warehouse. And we've been taking it apart. We noticed that these potentiometers are rusted all to hell. Um, if you have a game that has jittery controls on the test screen and stuff like that, it's a good thing to change this out. Um, for this, we're going to use the 5K potentiometer from Sega. I used to actually use, I've cleaned them up. I've already done one to show you what we're going to do. You see it's nice and neat and installed. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to change this one, and then we're going to go inside the programming and uh, calibrate it properly. So let's get started. All right, the first thing I did was I removed it from the game using the four bolts that are on the outside edge. And you can see they would be right here. That makes it easy to take out and we can get it to the bench. Um, there's only three connectors inside of there. And then, then after that, I removed the metal casing with four more screws. And you can see it's really bad shape. We're, okay, and uh, we got somebody explaining what's going on here. And uh, so, what we're going to do first is we're going to try to get this off of here so we can get the potentiometer off and then clean up this gear work here. So, what we're going to need to do is remove this screw here and this whole assembly should slide right out. So, but as you can see, it's rusted on there pretty good. So, we're going to have to hit it with some oil and stuff and see if we can just force it off or slowly but surely take it off. Now, the gas side is a little easier. There's only just the one gear. On the brake, there's like this extra gear here. This gives it a little more spin. So we have to be careful to put that back on. Um, so let's get started. We'll get this screw off. I've actually already loosened it. Like so. And when you're taking these off, you have to be very careful not to strip them. So, okay, we got that off. Now what we're going to, have to do is see if we can wiggle this thing. I see it's seized up pretty good. Let's get the. I'm going to get my tripod out here, and we're going to uh, see if we can get this off. All right, I'm going to undo this little. Uh, there's a little uh, little wire thing here that ties it down. A little twisty tie, so we don't mess up the wires. We're going to undo that. Just kind of bends around. This has obviously been made to service. So then we can get the wires a little more loose. That way, when we're wrenching on this, we're not ripping them off. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is just kind of wiggle it, like so. The gears will turn. And if you have a good unit that's not rusted, this would all, all you have to do is just wiggle it right off. But this one is rusted pretty bad. We're going to get a little 3-in-1 oil in here. help aid us in our wiggling. It makes a huge difference doing that right there. What I had to do the last one was I had to kind of pry it with a hammer. I'm going to be very careful doing this because you don't want to break it. Little taps. We'll tap a little taproos. A little bit. Yeah, it's a little bit. Oops. And just keep wiggling it. <laughs> Eyes are on the bed. Get a little pressure out. I'm using my thumb to push it out right there. It's coming. You can see it's coming off slowly. Finally off. Look at that. that right there. Get a rag and we'll wipe off that pivot point. 
unfortunate I had to hit it with a hammer like that. Okay. As you can see, there's a this extra gear on this brake assembly. What we want to do is we want to take this off of the pot, and then you're going to need an Allen wrench. It's a tiny little set screws that are in here. We're going to loosen those up, maybe with the right wrench. <laughs> All right, let's try again. There we go. We'll loosen up the other one. As you can see, this one's going to be a little more difficult. So, Once you've got the, the set screws loosened, you need to loosen the pot itself with a, just an adjustable wrench. Loosen that up. You can take this whole gear assembly apart if you want to and clean it. It depends. This one's pretty gummed up, so. You can see that the nut is off of the pot. Just pull the pot through. Set screws. If your set screws aren't loose enough, this may catch. So let's loosen them up. Should just fall right out. Oh, this thing is not being nice to me today. Okay, so it comes right out. Drop the nut and the washer for your pot, and then you'll have this gear out. And we're putting this back together. We gotta kind of remember how this went in there. You can see that we have the wires and then the pot, and then in the pot has a notch in it that corresponds to a notch that is on the pot itself. And I'll show you on the good one. There'll be a little a little nub that sticks up. You can see a little a little nub that sticks up. They have a hole in here for that nub right there. So. We're gonna do is we're gonna take this one and we're gonna put it on right away. So we're gonna feed it kind of through like this. Actually, we should brush this gear. Off. We're gonna brush this gear clean a little bit. Kind of just use a toothbrush and alcohol, to kind of clean up the gear. Should probably do that before we put it back together. I'm a little bit in a hurry today. You can use any kind of, you know, chemical to clean this. Whatever grease remover, W40. Just kind of get a lot of the gunk out of the gear. And we're gonna do the same to this. We're gonna brush this off. Get all the hair and gunk off both sides. pretty good and then we're also going to um, clean the teeth inside of here see there's some teeth on there we're gonna clean those it's pretty good you can get rid of that Tekken noise all right now that we got our gears pretty clean we're gonna go ahead and reverse the procedure we're gonna take the nut off of the new pot and we're going to apply a little bit of red Loctite to the threads. 
just a little bit. Trust me, this will save you a lot of headaches in the future. I'm going to put this on with a nub facing the hole. So now we got the nub in the hole and it doesn't wiggle. So we got it kind of where we want it. And we're going to put the thread, we're going to put the washer on. Maybe. <laughs> and then we're going to kind of just put the nut in there and thread it like one turn to let this fall down a little bit. Oops. So we can get our gear on. Now the gear will have a cutout in it that resembles the head of the potentiometer. So see there's a flat side and then there's a flat side on the gear. You can kind of see it or not, I don't know. See, there you go. So what we're going to do is we have to line that up so that the flat side on the flat side, see, like so. And now that we don't have this thing too tight, we can kind of wobble it around and stuff. So now that we got the flat side where it's supposed to be, there's a set screw for that. We're going to tighten that one down right away. I'm going to put a little red Loctite in there. Just a tiny bit. We're going to double check with the top just to make sure we're lined up and we tighten it pretty good. Not super tight, but snug. Then we're going to tighten the side one with a little... I'm running out of red Loctite. We'll put a little red Loctite in there. Tiny bit. Nice and, nice and snug, okay. We're gonna realign our notch. Now we're good. Then we're gonna thread this uh, other bolt down. This other nut here for the actually securing the pot. Oh, it's tarred and hard because it's already... <clears throat> it already has a red Loctite on it, so it's kind of dried a bit. There we go. You really don't have to replace the brake that often, but a game like Initial D, for some reason, the brake is super sensitive, and you can have issues if the brake pot has got a little jitterness to it. And what you're going to do is just kind of test move the pot like so. See, we got both sides of it. Here it's slamming on both sides of the stops inside of there. So right now, that's all we're going to do with that. We're going to lube it up with some grease in a little bit. Um, the next thing we're going to want to do is we're wanting to do the uh, electrics. So there's the old one. And basically all we're going to do is just match the terminals up. So. You know, you have a, a one, two, and a three on your pot, and then we're going to match the same colored wires. So you'll have five volts ground and then signal. Um, but as long as you just put it on the same way that you take it off, it'll be fine. And make sure that you're using a 5K potentiometer for Sega games. You know, it depends on how old the game is, but the you know, Naomi and stuff that you can see on the pot that it says 5K, 5,000 ohms. So it, at its, at its peak, it's 5,000 ohm resistance to zero. So, if you don't have the right pot, you'll have weirdness happening. It'll be either too sensitive or not sensitive enough. Um, <clears throat> okay, so, we're gonna pull back our uh, sheeting a little bit. What I do to remember where they are is I cut off like right here. See, and then on the old one I can go back for reference and see the colors. Um, if you're short on wire you can't do it this way, but we got plenty of wire here. So the next thing we're gonna do is strip back the wires. Maybe. Just a tiny bit. to get ourselves some heat shrink tubing ready. Get yourself some heat shrink tubing. Put some of our stuff away here. And cut off little bits of heat shrink tubing. 
like so. Really no right or wrong way for that. Um, a lot of times I cut back this wire tie and we'll put a new one on just so that the heat shrink tubing doesn't get too hot. We're going to put the heat shrink tubing on our wires. Twist them up a little bit. Like so. Nice and easy. We got another one. Okay. Wait for our soldering iron to heat up. We're going to kind of tin the end of the pot first. This is a used pot, actually. So. Now it's very, very important to use the heat shrink tubing on this. I've seen people just solder them on there and be done with it, but if these two, if these terminals connect, you could have a five volt short to ground, blow up power supplies, all kinds of things. So a little bit of heat shrink tubing really helps. Um, so now we're going to tin our wires with a little bit of solder. We got our heat shrink tubing on, that's good. Now we're gonna look at this for reference, so we can screw it up. Okay, so we got pink on number three, so we're gonna take pink. And you can thread it through the hole if you want to, if it's a new pot, otherwise you can just kind of surface solder it like so. Nice good solder bead, let it dry. Your hands will get hot during this, kind of sucks. You know, black is in the middle, so we're going to do black next. You want to make sure you get a nice, good solder joint. And then finally, we got the brown wire. Get it so that the solder melts away and the wire touches the terminal. So I try down. There's a little bit of the old wire sticking out here on the side. We're gonna kind of just sweep that away. So there you go. We got our solder, our wire soldered on. We're gonna. I'll let it cool down a bit. If you don't let this cool down, the heat shrink will kind of, you know, start shrinking before you can get it on there. Um, okay, so now it's pretty cool. We're gonna pull our heat shrink over the terminals as far as we can. Da -da -da -da. That's why it's important to cut it straight, unlike me. So, and cover all three terminals so there's no shorts. We're gonna get our Handy dandy lighter. I'm gonna kind of just toast it up. Toasty. Let's see. Let's see. Do the other side a little bit. Okay. So there we go. It, it feels a little rough because there's no lubricant on this. Fortunately, I don't know if I have the right stuff here. Okay. So the next part is. Clean up our mess. A lot of times these pots are just dirty and you can pry them open and clean it with some uh, contact cleaner, you know. Um, they are kind of expensive, so that's an option. Um, but these are toast. I mean, they're, there's all the rust on there. It's just no good. Um, so the next thing we're going to do is reverse the process here. I put a little three-in-one oil on this terminal here, just to help us slide it back on. Usually this is not this difficult, but and 
I'm just going to kind of slide it on a little bit. And now we're going to not put it all the way on, as you can see, because when we we're going to have to go to the game now and calibrate this. We want to calibrate it so that the pot is in the neutral position before we. Oops, sorry. We don't have this touching this this gear. It's not touching that gear right now, so we can freely move this around. See, and this is important because what we need to do is turn this so that the game thinks it's at center, and then we'll install it, and then we can fine tune it by bending this around. And it's it's got a notch by this screw here. You can see that we can fine tune it once we got it secured. So. The first thing we got to do is put this back on the game, go to the test menu, and see if we can find center for the brake and the gas, because I have to do the gas too. <clears throat> and then once we got it relatively center, we slide it on, and then we put the final screw in with some Loctite, by the way. And then we fine tune it a little bit better, and then we tighten it hard. Um, and then we should be good to go. So let's go to the game. Let's look at the test menu. Okay, we got our game up and running. We have our pedal assembly reattached. We're going to go, hopefully if this works, into the test menu. There we go. This is a Sega Naomi game, so we're going to need to go to the game test. It should be game test mode. And wait. And then it's going to be volume setting, which you would think volume is sound, but no, this is the volume of the pot. So there we go. And now we can see that we have our different readings here for acceleration, brake, stuff like that. Okay, this one is a self calibration. So what we're going to do is we're going to get it to center. And we're going to do the brake. Yes. If your game does not tell you what center is or does it show you um, a little diagram so once we got our you know our I think set roughly where it should be the main thing is you don't want the the pot to be at an end where it's gonna if someone hits the gas it's going to like snap the pot off because it's too close to the stop so we want to get it right in the middle so let me uh, see if I can get this thing slid on it's very tough because I'm trying to film it. We're getting there, we're kind of on now. Right about here. I want it in the A area. Okay. Now that we got it kind of fine-tuned, let's see if we can slide it on there. I'll come right back. Alright, as you can see, we got it pretty close to being all the way on there. And we got it fine-tuned. <clears throat> Okay. I also did the gas. The gas I had to kind of turn the pot to one side and we can calibrate it in the computer. We've got it pretty fine tuned and secure. You can see it's moving pretty good. It's pretty solid at four and then up to F. So um, the brake is a little harder for me to push on right here. It is doing what it's supposed to. So I'm gonna kind of see if I can get a little more pressure to push this in a little bit farther. We'll put that set screw in. We'll tighten it down. I already got this one tightened down with Loctite. So that should be pretty much it. So there you go. Once you got that in there, you reassemble everything, and um, you should be good to go. So that's a quick look at how to switch a pot on a Sega driving game. Thanks for watching. All right, one thing I forgot to show you was um, once you get everything secured relatively where it should be in the middle position on the brake and then the, the gas, you got to kind of tweak to one side. Um, we need to calibrate it in the computer on this game. So uh, we're going to do the accelerator. Oh, I got to do this with one hand. Okay, there we go. We, set, we select it. 
it's at the main position right now so we skip past that now we need to do the max position what you're going to do is push this thing to max uh, like so and then hit test which i don't think i can do <laughs> i only have one hand so hit that down and i'll come right back and then we hit test There you go. So after that, you hit test. Now you have a minimum position for the accelerator of 44, which is pretty good. We're at four. And then when it's pressed all the way down, it should get up to F something. There you go. Now it's better to do this when it's all assembled. You use real feet and stuff like that. So, but for now, that can just show you how it does. And we're going to do the same thing with the brake when it's assembled. It's really hard to do with your hands. So, um, so there you go. Once you get that done, you should be set to go with nice uh, nice pots. Um, you know, if it's jittering on the end, that's okay, but this one's the one that you don't want jittering. So, I mean, some games, it'll, it'll show you where the position of the wheel is and stuff like that. Some games will have this min-max thing. So, it depends on the Sega game. Um, so, there you go.